everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I have my camera once again set up a little bit weird today, so I hope it doesn't bother you that I'm a little catty cornered on my desk. I'm just playing with different angles, as most of you know don't have much room where I actually film. This is kind of like the filming set, but it's also where I literally do all my research as well. It is actually my desk and it's in my bedroom. Right now, I would really love to move, <laughs> but when the time is right, I'm sure we will move. But for right now, this is kind of what I'm obviously working with. So thank you guys so much for understanding. And um, this video is something that I've never done before. I know that other channels, especially like more of the normie or, or drama channels will do this from time to time. But as I was going through the comment sections on this one particular video that we referenced with Tamara and Catherine earlier this week, I thought we need to talk about the comment section of this video because, you know, I... I I think that there obviously, in my opinion, as many of you guys know, there are a lot of delusional people in the quote unquote truther world. But just because I believe that there are a lot of delusional people in the truther world doesn't mean that I don't believe that nefarious stuff on crazy levels, I'm trying to watch my wording, guys, because it's YouTube, is going on. Like two things can be true, right? You can have this crazy stuff going on in the world with the nefarious side and we'll say their religious beliefs and you can also have very delirious and delusional people within the disclosure community trying to expose those practices and beliefs um for more of a conversation on that, on what I mean by delusional people, we are going through some actual cases over on Wednesdays on Solutions with Shanti. Um, so make sure you check out that channel. I will link that down below. But with that being said, when I am on my own, just hanging out at home, if I'm not researching or not doing something, if, if I'm having downtime, I listen to like story time videos. I like to hear people, I, I, this channel is supposed to be predominantly a storytelling channel based off of research. And a lot of these storytelling channels will basically like go to Reddit or go to these forums or people will submit stories. Sometimes they're fictional stories. Sometimes they're stories found in truth, but they're very interesting nonetheless. And a few weeks ago, a video popped up from a pretty big channel, and it was about a party that this character had been invited to in Los Angeles. This character, the main character of the story, was a YouTuber who was growing, was getting way more popular and was getting getting way becoming way more talented. Now, I will give a disclaimer. I don't know if the person telling this story, if this literally happened to him and he's retelling the story from his own experience, or if he found this story off of Reddit, somebody else shared the story and he is reading it and telling it to you on YouTube. Because if you go to this, it's funny, even my boyfriend was like, gosh, this guy's had a lot of weird stuff happen to him. And I was like, no, most of these stories are like Reddit stories that he's reading and, and retelling to us. They're not all his stories. But now I kind of think it might have been something that had happened to him. And so Tamara and I re referenced this um, on our episode earlier this week with Catherine. And it's the video, I wish I never went to this party. He did do a part two where he did show the um, invitation that he allegedly received. But, you know, with that being said to you guys, this is a very big YouTube channel. So um, he could have just made a prop in order, you know, f I, I have reached out to him. Let me, let me, re I have reached out to him to try to get him to come on my channel and talk about this. But I, a lot of times these big channels don't c collaborate and that's fine. Um, so anyway, I will link this channel down below or this video specifically down below for you guys if you missed it. But basically he retails this story about him being a young man in Los Angeles. He is a YouTuber. He's struggling as a young kid, but he's, his career is picking up on YouTube. And I've talked about this before. When you get on YouTube, you, you start to get... Uh, offers you know youtube is a great platform for expanding your business 
for people, you know, getting your product out there. It's not YouTube's function isn't just to make money off of the YouTube platform. It's kind of like a walking billboard in other aspects as well. And so it makes sense that as his channel started to grow and, you know, as his talent was observed by other people, he started to get more opportunities and more options to grow his brand. So as he's telling this story, he gets this kind of gnarly invitation to come to this particular party in the, the Hollywood Hills. It sounds very interesting. Apparently, a lot of celebrities are going to be there, a lot of casting agents, managers, stuff that you need, even for YouTube. Like, even a lot of YouTubers will have, like, an agent or a manager the bigger they get. It, and in that sense, guys, in the in the positive sense, that's, that's not, like, a handler. You know, that's just somebody that literally helps you manage your brand or your business. They're not intervening in your private or personal life. So there is a positive element to having, like, a manager um, when you hit 100,000 subscribers, YouTube gives you a manager anyway, which I would freaking love because I do need help with the administration stuff, with the emails, all that kind of stuff. But they don't get involved. And, you know, a handler is somebody who tries to control your whole life. Managers, agents just help you with your career, right? They're not getting involved in your personal stuff. It's just your career. Um, and so at this party, you know, there's going to be... Um, managers, agents, uh, influential people in the entertainment industry. This is a great way he believes to to grow his profession. You know, he's, as most people, not thinking that there's anything um, ominous about what what's going to happen. Well, in the story, he talks about how, I think it's one of his neighbors, I'll have to go back and re-listen, or you guys can go and listen, that basically pulls him into his apartment and, and with tears in his eyes, he's like, do not go to this party. You do not want to go to this party. And he thinks this guy's crazy. He goes to the party. He tells the story about renting a suit. He and his friend go to this party. They go through all these different rooms and, and the themes of the rooms, they're wearing masks. The themes of the rooms just get weirder and weirder and weirder until he gets to a room where basically he's asked to denounce his faith his religion. And that's where he's like, I don't care if this is a party. I don't care if this is a theme party. I can't do this. And so he gets escorted out of the party. Well, at that time, allegedly, he um, looks through a window and sees what's happening in the next room. And so he sees the shenanigans, we'll say, that his friend is now being forced to do. And, and I think we do know what those shenanigans are. Please, you guys, be very mindful in the comment section. Do not put any words that are, you know, are bad because they're getting really even crazy with censorship, but you guys know, we'll just call it the shenanigans of their religion. So I, um, we talked about this with Tamara, um, and Catherine earlier this week at the end of the video, he basically has to leave Los Angeles because weird things are happening. Um, he doesn't feel safe, but you know, he basically the moral of the story too, is that you can be a successful creator or actor or producer, you can be in the music industry and you can steer clear of this group. And that's kind of the moral I took from the story. Like, you know, if you get involved in this group, they own you. But if you still steer clear of this group, it might take a while to build your career, but you can build a career without having anything to do with this group. And, and I think that's important too, because I think sometimes in the quote unquote truth of the world, people get very vigilante and they want to just tar everyone. They want to just violently go after everyone who's in a certain industry. And that's not okay because some of these people are innocent and haven't done anything. And they're literally just trying to be actors and actresses or YouTubers, whatever. But let's go through some of these comments. Now, in this video, I want to make something very clear. Doug, I believe, is the guy's name. He never specifies what religion he is. So he never specifies. But it's interesting. People assume it's Christianity. And it could very well be Christianity. But there are a couple of annoying comments here about the, the name Jesus. As you guys know, Jesus means hail Satan. So it's not... You know, and if you have this belief that your religion is right and nobody else's religion is right, then that's a very dangerous path. That's a negative path. Like there are many trees in the forest, all the trees in the forest, and they're all reaching towards the same light. There are many ways to find God. I heard it earlier this week. I was doing some research for the Lori Vallow case, and I heard Heather Daybell 
Chad Daybell's sister-in-law say that somebody at her um, Mormon church had said, you know, the, the ways, to, however many people, I'm paraphrasing, but she basically said, however many people are on the planet, that's how many ways there are to God, right? So I, I don't, um, I don't really like some of those credits that, that simplify um, the whole like Jesus thing, because first of all, Jesus means hell, Satan. Second of all, um, his name was Joshua. Let's have some respect. His name was Joshua. And um, I don't think that he would be approving of people uh, idolizing him in that sense that, that other people, anyway, I'm digressing. You guys know what I mean. So um, let's, there's some very, very, very interesting comments. Like somebody bought up Dave Chappelle, which we know a lot about Dave. This sounds like the stuff that Dave Chappelle went through. He ended up leaving a $50 million deal because of it. I love this one. When a grown man tells you not to do something with tears in his eyes, you best believe him. And that was the guy in the apartment that was like, do not go to this, um, do not go to this, this, uh, this party. Um, let's see. I remember Dave Chappelle saying that they did bizarre things to make him feel like he was going crazy, like overnight changing where a wall and a door was in his studio where he worked. I hope this sick gets exposed and ended. Glad you're alive, kid. Very glad you left the party. Well, that's what he talks about. So changing a door and a wall. That's what Doug refers to, like his apartment, like things would be fixed or his friend who was visiting would mention, Hey, thanks for getting the coffee creamer. I, you know, that I asked for, um, I'm, I, and he didn't get it like, but it would be replaced in his, his house or things in his car would be fixed. Right. So it's just these little things that other people would think you were crazy if you went and said like something's going on, but they're letting you know that they're watching you. Right. Um, let's see. Tremendous respect for you for refusing to sell your soul and re reinforcing what some of us already know to be true. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this Jim Carrey comment because in my gut, I feel like Jim Carrey's, in my opinion, I don't have any proof for this. So please, you know, be kind when you don't have proof. But in my gut, I don't think Jim Carrey is that great of a guy. So Jim Carrey has tried to warn people about this, but no one takes him seriously. I think the only reason he hasn't disappeared is because he's a comedian and people believe it's all part of his act. Remember when he was on Jimmy Kimmel, Kimmel that man is not kidding. You know, um, well, they and I will push back by that a little bit too, because they do have to tell you, like, even though this is a secret society, they do, they have to work off of the, off of consent, right? So they have to tell you what they're doing. I've said it before on other videos, a lot of these so-called influencer are plants. The agenda is, was, and will always be the corruption of our souls. I've been working, uh, excuse me, I've been wondering if anybody would have the guts to make a video like this. Bravo to you, Dougie. This kind of stuff needs to become more common knowledge so everybody knows that fame is never free. It's interesting, a lot of, he meant, references a lot of these influencers are plants because, you know, influencer you know an actor can be an influencer i technically legally because of the number of my um subscribers i technically am considered a public person which goes under the influencer bracket if you have over ten thousand subscribers on a particular platform then you are considered to be an influencer right now again but as i said a lot of actors can also be classified as influencers too because they influence people However, I think what this person is referring to now is someone like me, a YouTuber. And if you guys remember back a while ago, Catherine and I went through the Cassiopeians where they talked about the underground people, about how there are people who have been raised underground and they've been trained for this time. And they said that there are a lot of big YouTubers in the truther community who are plants. I think I know who one is. I think I'm pretty, I'm like 99% sure I know who one of those is. Um, I'm not going to say anything else, but they've been trained to be the Trojan horse, to come in as a plant. So I think it's interesting that this person refer, uh, referenced that. 
I'm so happy people here are awake. I woke up three years ago. My mom woke up in the late 90s. I really commend the people who have been awake for a long time and have been ridiculed. That must have been so frustrating. That's my boyfriend. My boyfriend's been awake for over 20 years now. So that's why he's so grounded with this stuff because he's, you know, he's seen the junk conspiracy. He's g seen the junk conspiracy cul-de-sacs. He has a way more grounded approach to what's going on right now in the battle that we find ourselves in. Now, this is what I thought was interesting. A few people described in the comment section the rooms as the seven deadly sins. Um, you have two comments in a row here. It looks like the, the creator actually responded to this comment. So let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he, um, he's, okay. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times bigger creators will do this. They'll just link you to their next video. Um, but he's not, again, there's, this is multiple, like this person even said, it seems like each different room at the party represented the seven deadly sins, the lust, the gluttony, anger, gossip, etc. Another person, each room sounds like a representation of the seven deadly sins. And this is what's interesting because we know seven, all numbers, you know, again, I've, I've said this so many times, the darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can create. That's it. Only the light can create. So the only thing the darkness can do is steal from the light and invert it or try to mirror the light, right? So um, seven is a very, very, very powerfully spiritually good number, but we see how that, that it got inverted, right, with the seven deadly sins. All right. An acquaintance of mine who did high-end fishing in Los Angeles told me about working for Paris Hilton once. He said in one room there were several me metal cages that looked large enough to hold a small person. I'm going to say allegedly, um, you know, Paris Hilton, we know a lot about her family, but I have been told, too, that she is not like her family. We do know that Paris is a big rescuer of animals, so the small cages could be for animal rescue um, so that might be, I don't know though. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know the girl. So anyway, interesting. Um, sad part is even though this keeps getting exposed, there will always be desperate people who will comply. Yeah. Cause 50% of the world are organic portals, people, people. And also this brings up a good point too. So this Sarah Gibbons brings up a really, really good point that I think a lot of people miss in this great awakening and this is why um why i often say please read the law of one the law of one is such a non-biased very scientific approach to what we're going through right now in third density which is the density we're in there are going to be people who are going to comply whether that's because they're or they are organic portals themselves and don't have a soul or more importantly, they are sold people, people with souls like you and me, who have chosen, made the choice to go the negative path. The law of one talks about the polarity of dark and light. These are two paths, service to self, service to others. Service to self is the dark path. Service to others is the path of light, right? So we have to remember that, like, Third density is about, that's the whole point of third density is choice. The choices that you make. It's the free will choice. So each and every one of us have choices to make, whether we're going to serve others or serve ourselves, serve the light or serve the darkness. Now it's called the law of one because it eventually wraps back up into the great one. But people who choose the darkness, they're making that choice. And as far as spirit is concerned, we have to also remember, guys, that the quantum, the astral, that only exists in third density. There's no quantum or astral planes in fourth, fifth, or sixth density. That's only in third density. Because in third density, we have a veil. There's a veil over us. We cannot see densities beyond third unless the veil breaks or unless there's a crack and we see something, we know that for fourth densities that want to be seen on planet Earth, they want to come here and be seen, they have to do things in order to manifest, like they have to eat certain meat of a certain animal, 
I don't want to say too much on YouTube or drink gold in order to be able to manifest because it takes a lot, right? Because we're the only density that has the astral or the quantum. Yeah. Doesn't exist. The astro, the quantum does not exist in fourth density, fifth density, or sixth density. It only exists for third and under. So when we're, when we're making that departure, when we're, we're about to evolve and come into fourth density, there are fourth density negative planets and there are fourth density positive planets. On third density planet Earth that we're on right now, this is the fork in the road. These are the choices that we make. And spirit's going to step back. Spirit's going to, there, there is not, spirit's not going to intervene and tell you which path to go. If spirit tried to intervene to tell you which path to go, then it's a negative de uh, entity, right? Negative entities, because positive entities are not going to try to control you. Does that make sense? So like on any third density planet, there's always going to be a polarity. There's always going to be people serving the dark and people serving the light. Always. That's, that's the law. That's what third density is. It's not until you get to fourth density that they split. Okay, so and this is why it's super important. And again, why I tell people to read the law of one. There are so many, so many, so many infiltrators in the truth or community that are out there making you believe that the dark side has capitulated. In what world, in what world does a service to self being Take a service to others action by capitulating. To surrender is to be service to others. If you are trying to polarize negative, and it is harder to polarize negative than it is to polarize positive. To polarize negative, you have to be like 94% service to self. That's why they do these sick parties, right? To polarize positive, you just got to be 51% service to others. So if you're trying, instinctually trying, which the law of one, the Cassiopeians say that the, the higher ups of the world do know this. They know about the polarizations. They know about the two paths. They are actually gunning for four density negative. So if that's their trajectory, they're not going to then lose it all by capitulating. They're going to fight to the death. Now, sometimes a fourth density negative, a person, a candidate for fourth density negative will do things that appear, they appear to be service to others because they're trying to manipulate you. All right. So again, you guys, I highly suggest, please get the law of one books, read them, study them. It will make what's going on in this world so much clearer and it will give you, it will help you have a, a way a way better sense of discernment so that you're not manipulated because it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart when I see people in the comment say, section saying, it's all a movie. It's all scripted. You have fallen hook. If you believe that, you've fallen hook, light, and sinker for the negative side. I don't know how else to say it. They duped you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Educate yourself. Learn about, watch HG Tudor's channel where he talks about narcissistic psychopaths and how they think and how they plot and how they change themselves and how they evolve and mutate in order to manipulate. Okay? So this is super, super important. These parties, these parties are sadly, are going to keep continuing. They're going to continue until we all have to go either fourth sensitive positive or fourth sensitive negative. And according to the Cassiopeians, we're on borrowed time. We were already supposed to have flipped, but we're on borrowed time right now. So, all right. I hope that makes sense. If you guys want more of a thorough explanation about that, let me know in the comment section below and maybe I can talk Mr. Fox into coming on and giving an even more thorough explanation about this battle between the densities. Just let me know. All right, you need to be careful too. I have a relative who's an actress and you're not crazy. You are so flippin' fortunate to be alive. Stay safe. Things are coming out, more out now, so your story isn't so out there. All right. Doug, I was at CAA for four years. CAA is one of the biggest agencies in Los Angeles, all right? Um yeah. I, I was gonna say something else, but I, I don't think I'll I don't think I'll say that on YouTube. There there are 
it's like it's like a catch twenty two. Like if you're able to score a agent with CAA, then you're definitely on you're in the right trajectory to have a really solid career. However, a lot of CAA, not all of CAA. Remember, we can't paint everyone black. Every single human being is responsible for his or her own actions, right? So not everyone in CAA is involved in this nefarious group, okay? Um, but a lot of them are. I lived in Studio City. My agent represented me and three other people who were giant stars and even bigger now. The weirdness you speak of here is as real as the concrete surrounding the LA River. All right, this is the Mac Daddy comment that I found, and I'm going to recount a story I have from when I lived in Los Angeles. From some of you don't know, I lived in LA for a long time after after school. So I do know LA pretty, pretty well. Um, I lived in LA for a year. This one time my manager was bringing me to a party. He said, if you notice anything odd, don't say anything. We will talk about it later. The party was in a small, trendy LA bar. It seemed like a typical party until he introduced me to this girl. She was young and pretty, but her eyes were off. They looked like lizard eyes. This was 2000. Costume contacts were not easily available, and it wasn't that kind of party. I first thought she was born like that, and I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be rude, but I'm not sure I was able to control my facial expressions. Anyways, she was talking to Mikey, and she was really flirty in an odd way. It didn't seem natural. Mikey was giggling, and eventually we, we moved on to other people in the party. The rest of the night, I kept looking at other people to see if they would still glance at the girl with lizard eyes. Nobody seemed to notice and honestly, I thought I was the rudest person in the party. After Mikey asked me if I saw anything weird, and I was like, yeah, the girl with lizard eyes, was she born that way? He laughed and said, you can see it too. The subject got changed, and I didn't think about what he said until later. I don't think anybody else saw it. Like what I saw was hidden for most people. I left LA, got married. Mikey won an Oscar for a movie he produced called Spotlight. His ex his accept acceptance speech talks about tearing down the church. I asked him years later about the girl with lizard eyes, and he said, I can't believe you remember that. I asked if you've ever seen anything else like that, and he said, I work in Hollywood. I'm surrounded by reptiles. Rituals involving intimacy with people who cannot consent to that intimacy, if you guys know what I mean. So, so that's when church comes from a demonic name that means to control and hypnotize. So the church is absolutely part of this group. They're part of this group. They're the top of this group. Any of the big religions, any of the big things are all compromised in that way. Doesn't mean that Yahshua does not mean that Yahshua was bad. Let's get that straight. Two things can be true. Yahshua was a good person who tried to help people. He wasn't ever crucified. That's a story for a different day. Um, but Jesus is not Yahshua. Jesus means hell Satan. The Jays didn't exist back when Yahshua lived. Okay, so anyway, but let's talk about the reptilian eyes. So she said this is early 2000s. My story, and I've mentioned this before. It's been a while. So some of you might remember this story. For some of you, this might be new. Because again, I too lived in Los Angeles for a long time after school. Um, and this was probably the late 2000s. I was in my mid 20s. So I was born in 1983. So I was in my mid 20s at this time. And at this point, everybody had a cell phone. But it was like the flip phones. I kind of miss the flip phones because there was nothing. There's nothing as exciting as like slamming the phone shut when you're mad. So there was no like iPhone, right? That that had that was on the brink of coming out. That was like on the precipice of coming out. And even though with those old flip phones there were cameras, you know, people were not going around at that time taking a bunch of pictures. The whole like selfie thing had not come out yet. Instagram was not a thing yet. So the fact that there were no pictures taken, you know, people might ask, why didn't you take pictures at this party? Well, that just wasn't. A, a part of our culture at this time. So I, my ex was in the music industry and um, he was not involved in any of this stuff, but nonetheless, we would get invited to some of these parties. Now the party that I'm going to refer to or any of the parties that we went to were nothing like, absolutely nothing like the party that this guy is speaking about. From the outside looking in, the parties that we would go to were just typical get togethers. And 
most of them, I, I mean, LA is a weird place anyway. So yeah, there was like weird shit, but nothing like illegal, nothing like super crazy. But this one night, it was like a Tuesday night. I remember it was, it was a weeknight. Um, we went to a party in the Hollywood Hills and it was a party. The guy, the house, the property was owned by a cartoonist. And I'm not going to say if I said the cartoon that he created, you would know exactly. I mean, this was a very popular car cartoon, especially from my generation. And I met the guy and the guy himself, I have nothing but good things to say about him. The guy was really freaking nice. I, he seemed like a good soul. He, the party was in his guest house, which was way bigger than any other house I'd ever been in. And I grew up around wealthy people, but this guest house was huge. Anyway, he, he gave me a tour of the house, showed me around. And I was more fascinated in his story because he himself has a pretty incredible story about coming to the United States. And he just was a very, very kind guy. So my gut tells me that if there was something nefarious going on at this party, I don't think he was the one orchestrating it. I just... Still looking back, he just was a really kind guy. But anyway, we're at this party, and I notice that there are, like, a couple of, like, eight-year-old, nine-year-old kids. Now, I'm in my, my mid-20s at this point. And I, I remember thinking, like, that's weird. Like, why, why are there, like, eight-year-olds here? It's a Tuesday night, so it's a school night. And this is an adult party. Like, there was a lot of drinking going on. There was some, you know, it's L.A. There was some other stuff going on. Um, and I didn't see anything. Like, I never saw anything inappropriate happen with these kids. They seemed pretty healthy. Um, and I remember, like, coming to terms. Because L.A. is a different, it's a different beast. It's it's not like, like any, the culturally L.A. is not like anywhere else in the world. Seriously, it's like its, its own universe. And I just, I justified it in my head that they must be the kids of somebody at the party. And I justified that this is LA and maybe the parents needed to come to this party because they were meeting, they were networking, they were meeting someone here and it's fine. It's LA. People do weird things in LA just because I grew up in, in uh, growing up in Georgia. Like we had a bedtime, you know, the, very different cultural, like it would not be culturally acceptable for where I grew up for an eight year old kid to be at one o'clock in the morning, be at a party, an adult party, right? On a Tuesday night, a school night. So that's how I justified it. But obviously it stuck out in my head because I thought it was peculiar. I thought it was very strange. Now, again, it could have been nothing. It absolutely could have been nothing. It literally could have been what I assumed it was. It could have been kids of a parent there. Maybe they had the next day off of school for some reason. I don't know. Um, but it stuck in my head that I thought it was strange. All right. I absolutely believe you. I've been studying these things for most of my life. You are so right not to go to that last room. Um, all right. This is why director Stanley Kubrick was unalived after the release of the movie Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah, and, and a lot of people have mistaken Kubrick for a good guy that he was trying to tell us because he also did Clockwork Orange, which is about other things that they do. Um, but I've been told with really good authority that Kubrick was not a good guy at all. So anyway, but remember, there's no loyalty amongst thieves. They will throw each other under the bus. They absolutely will throw each other. Typically on the, the negative side, they hate each other. They use each other when they need each other, but they will also throw each other under the bus. All right. I was being offered the opportunity to join a teen touring music group when I was in high school. After positive reviews in a semi-professional theater, the director of the program was approached about my availability. She told them I was not available. I found out and was furious that my chance was being stolen and how it should be my choice. She said something that I've only recently, 40 years later, came to appreciate. I know these people and I know what they want. You have no idea what they will do to you. They will destroy you. You know, I, I have, part of me says good for her for protecting her, but also she probably should have given the parents and the child the choice because she, she took away their free will choice. Anyway. All right. I can't believe that anyone would doubt, question, criticize, shame, harass, or demand anything more from you after all you've shared with us. This was a genuine, 
I don't know if I can say that word, but difference is you're a godsend. This this warning, I'm I'm certain you've saved souls. I only wish, I love and only wish I could articulate myself half the way you do. Great job. I wish you all the blessings God has in store for you. Thank you so much for your video. You are a God sent as well as highly favored. Now that I think of it, I think I was invited to something that could have been similar when I was 25. And the people that invited me were billionaires, owning half of Vogue and CNN, etc. The idea of entering an NY club and stripping into a towel scared me. I felt it was very off and not normal. Listen, all of you guys now in your 20s need to enhance your intuition and psychic ability so you can detect things. This is so, so direly important. I don't think you need to enhance anything. I just got it. I just think you need to start listening to your gut. We are born with the gut intuition. Just start listening to your gut. I always believe the eyes. Uh, I always believe that the movie Eyes Wide Shut was based on real events, things I've heard. This goes on with most of all the elites, Hollywood CEO, and of course our politicians, all of the elite class. You can bet. I'd much rather have my soul. I'm going to push back a little bit on that because, again, we can't paint everyone in a particular group bad, right? We see so many people say, well, if you have this blood type, then you're obvious. That's bigotry. That's bigotry. Just because somebody is rich does not necessarily mean they are bad. We need evidence of their crimes. All right. But a lot of them are. A lot of them are. But Oh my God, I was not expecting this at all. Thank you for sharing this. This is insane. It's like we all know, but when you hear a personal story like this, a freaking blessing in disguise, you have a responsibility now to keep warning people because of what you saw. Yes and no. Well, let's talk about the law of one with this. Yes and no. So let's look at this last line. If it'll let me just highlight this one last line. So this could be seen as a form of manipulation. In the law of one, martyrdom is considered a negative trait. Right? So the darkness has manipulated martyrdom to make you feel like it's a good thing. Martyrdom is a negative trait. So does he have a responsibility to keep warning people? If he's in a safe environment, where his life's not going to be threatened, then yes. If he's not in a safe environment and this could get his life threatened or he could lose his life because of it, no. All right. I just told one of my friends that I'm not getting rape deed or joining a cult to make movies. She laughed, but I didn't. Independent in St. Louis, proud to support you, and I left L.A. too. Yep. So you can be, guys. See, again, like I said, you can be in the creative industry. You can be in the... the, the, the uh, we talked about this with Tamara and Catherine. Being an artist of any, any kind, being a content creator, being a actress or an actor, being a musician, being a writer, a poet, a visual artist, um, that's all positively oriented careers because your product helps people, right? So, and you're getting paid for that product. So it's not martyrdom So because you're getting paid for it and you're helping people at the same time. So you can be like this guy basically just said, I'm, I'm going to be independent in St. Louis and I'm going to continue doing this crap without getting involved in with this group of people. So Thank you to uh, Civil Theory CEO. I probably need to put my glasses on because it's a little bit blurry. Um, for kind of proving that point that you can be an actor, you can be a musician, you can be all of these things and not be associated with the dark arts. You can be in LA too and, and, and be working in LA and not be associated with the dark arts. All right. That's better. I literally had to pause this video to absorb what this guy is saying. I remember Mel Gibson talking about these parties and they made him sound crazy. I lived there and was a singer. I got a call once from a person who never answered when I asked who he was. He asked me three times, what would you be willing to do that somebody else wouldn't do in order to get what you want? Meaning further my career. I kept asking like, what do you mean? Finally, I said, I am not willing to do anything. 
against my personal integrity, I was raised Christian. He got the phone and still never found out who he was, but I think I dodged a bullet. And literally wait till people realize that this is the same as those parties that they throw. I always compare YouTubers that tell stories to, to Mr. Balin and expect them to be rubbish, which they usually are in comparison, but your way of storytelling is amazing and like no other. You are truly unique and gifted, and I cannot wait for you to drop some more videos. I'm so glad YouTube recommended you. I dated a pretty well-known actress in 2000 through 2000 or 2009, excuse me, through 2010. For legal reasons, I cannot disclose her name due to what I'm going to tell you. She brought me to a similar type of party, less showmanship, but similar ending. We gathered in a room and in a house in the Hollywood Hills due to her status, status, excuse me. We were let in quickly after signing in, signing an NDA. I saw people in there that I grew up watching. I'm talking A-list level celebrities. No masks were asked to be put on and phones were confiscated. But at that time, phone capabilities were not what they are now. So it wouldn't matter. Like I was saying with my story too, it wouldn't have mattered. We were ushered into a room with a two foot platform in the corner and asked to gather around after a cocktail was handed to us. A door opened to the left of the platform and three men walked to the platform wearing practically nothing. I started to back up because it seemed like something bad was going to happen. Then the hostess asked two guys and a woman who were standing off to the stage to come on stage. The crowd began to yell and curse and spit on them as they undressed. The three men who walked out approached the three they just called on stage and it got nasty. I was warned by my ex to not leave. So I told her that I had to use the restroom and that I would be back. I found a bathroom and stayed in there for 30 minutes contemplating what to do. I decided I was going to call a cab. As I exited the bathroom, my ex was waiting for me outside the door and told me our ride was outside. We left as soon as we got we left, and as soon as we got back to her place, she told me to leave. I left, and she ended our relationship the next day. The two guys they had called up on stage ended up becoming famous actors. The girl did not. F Hollywood, F the elites. So that's why there are so many creators that are mysteriously popular for no reason. And it annoy annoys me that I see them in my feed. Or like in the truther world, there are some truther people that grew really big platforms feeding everybody a bunch of bullshit and um they claimed that the white hats took their channels down because they were so close to the truth but there's a website you can go to and you can see they took their own platforms down youtube didn't take their platforms down they took them down to manipulate you into believing them This story is 100% in one of the most legit stories of an elite secret organization I have heard of in a long time. Cat Williams said this year is when the truth would come out chills. P. Diddy Ray just proves how real these stories are. I was a young actress in L.A. in the early 2000s, and I was an unpaid intern at a management company owned by a lesbian. After working there for about six weeks, she invited me out to talk more about my career. She took me to a lesbian bar, and we sat with a drink. She said, you've heard of the gay mafia, right? I said, yes, gay mafia is male. She said, well, there is a lesbian mafia, too. Ellen DeGeneres hosts a party at her house every month, and I can take you if you'd like. I said no. I knew there was no such thing as a free lunch. I quit in interning for her right away. Eventually left LA because the town is depressing. All right, let's talk about that. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Uh, Laura Knight, from the person who channels the Cassiopeians, talks about that all the time. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Basically, the white hats aren't coming to save you. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Everything in life is cause and effect. You want to be free of this group? Then you have to make the choices to be free of this group. No one can do it for you. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Hence why in my channel, as I've said late, uh, recently, I'm not bringing on any other spiritualist or spiritual person to my channel unless they have a teacher and a lineage. I'm not bringing on anybody on my channel that just claims they can cha magically channel because there's no such thing as a free lunch. All right. Again, 
please, 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 you guys, if you do anything for yourself, read the law of one, read it for yourself, follow the Cassiopeian board. It will make everything make so much more sense and will help you to become more grounded in this battle because we are in a battle. This is friction. This is totally, this is the friction that we signed up for when we came here. This reminds me of, of that one episode of Ellen that never got put on rerun when Ellen asked, hey, do you want to know what's weird? And Chrissy, uh, Chrissy Teigen told Ellen, is it, it's weird as those, is it as weird as those parties you keep inviting me to? Cat Williams already told y'all about the mansion parties in the different rooms. And then after that stand up, yeah, his life started falling apart. Evil occult devil worshiping ritual. Holy shit. So gross. Um, all glory goes to God for getting you out of that house of horrors. I'm so happy that you chose God and you stood. Actually, he got himself out of that. Like, like you know, his, he chose. Let, let's, let's get that, that, because that's the point. I, I'm a, as big a fan of God as anyone. I pray all the time. I'm constantly thinking about my actions, but you cannot put your choices. You cannot blame another entity for your choices, Right. Same as you have to make, he chose, he made the decision. If you listen to the video to bow out, his friends didn't bow out. They made the choice to go forward. He made that choice. He made that choice, right? So it wasn't that God got him out of the house. He made the choice to leave the house. Let's get that, that on his choice of going positive. Okay. So let's, let's give credit where credit is due here. When actor Isaac Cappy died, when actor Isaac Cappy was un unalived, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not going to read that all out loud. You guys can read it on the screen. All right, you guys. So I think what I'm going to do now, I just really wanted to um, look at that comment section with you guys, because what do you guys think of that comment section? You know, I've, I've said this so many times. I really, when things are exposed, like the whole Kate Middleton situation, all the P. Diddy stuff and all this comes out, I've found, because again, I 90% of the truthers out there, I think are just paid infiltrators anyway. <laughs> but I typically... Um, like to look and see what the quote unquote normies are saying because normies are more grounded right and they're more percept because they're more grounded they tend to be more perspective uh, they have a different perception of of what's going on and so when i saw all of those comments i just thought wow more and more and more people are becoming aware of what the darkness does and so hopefully this means that this <laughs> this crap this crap shoot we're in that this this transition into a positive a positive, more positive planet is hopefully closer. Like I said earlier in the Cassiopeians, they do say we're, we are on borrowed time right now. More people need to start choosing um, where they, which, which, whichever direction they want to go, negative or positive, in order for us to, for Earth, planet Earth, to move to where planet Earth needs to go. There are other third density planets out there, of course. Again, get the law of one, you guys. Get the Cassiopeians. And if you know this guy... I did. I did reach out to him on Instagram. I could not find an email for him, but I did shoot him a message on Instagram to see if perhaps he would come on my channel. Um, I don't know if he will, though, because I don't, again, I don't think he doesn't know me. And I don't think that these bigger YouTube channels really collaborate as much as like uh, we do, you know, but we, we have a different intention, right? Like even though esoteric Atlanta is my business now, it is my, my brand. Now my intention for coming onto YouTube is, is obviously different than, um, than a pure, you know, content creator who just wants to story tell, right? Um, there, even though it's both, they're both businesses that they're, but they're both how we essentially make a living for ourselves. We're not martyring ourselves, but the intention is still very different. So that's again, why we collab a lot with like my friends, Catherine, Shanti, Tamara, because we're, we have the same intention. So anyway, you guys, let me know again, please be careful in the comment section about the words you use. Um, I might have to delete some comments if there are some no, no words. Again, that is not my choice. That is the platform's choice. Um, and, uh, yeah, I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about that. So, 
And I will link the video, of course, down in the description box if you guys missed that video so you can hear the full story coming from him himself. All right, you. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.